Okay, so because we're not meeting on Friday because of this event, we're going to have to be kind of speedy with this material. But uh, as we mentioned before a minute ago, the um, assignment is still due on Friday, even though we're not meeting on Friday because it's all handed in electronically and we've got Piazza. And I'm glad to monitor Piazza if you guys have questions. So um, I think this will be one because there's a lot, lots of there's lots of uh, methods that you're going to be completing for linked lists. So we so again, this is chapter six, mutable lists, and what does mutable mean? Change. Means that they can be changed. Okay, and then we looked at these classic linked list implementations. The simple one in part A, in part B we looked at having a. A, a list with a pointer to the to the last node as well as the first node, and that gave us big theta of one access to the end node. And then in part C, we said, "Aha!" But you can do it without that if you have make the list circular and you have a link to the last one, and then you can access the last node and the first node in time big theta of one. And then we said, if you want to go backward or forward, you can have doubly linked list in part D here and then a doubly linked circular list and then another variation on this is a, um, <coughs> linked, a doubly linked circular list with a head node and all of these are common so it's good for you to have seen them uh, to see them and then we said in figure 6.3 is our UML diagram for the, our linked <coughs> list project and the list L what does a list have? what does a list have? Yes, it has a node. It has a pointer to a node. So and that, that pointer is called underscore head. So that points to the head node, the first node in the linked list. And then a node itself not only has data, but it also has a what? A pointer to a node. So, so, so that symbol, that UML diagram symbol, we, we saw that that uh, solid diamond is, means what? Does that mean inheritance or class composition? That means class composition. So what happened? That's a has a as opposed to is a. So we said the inheritance symbol here uh, with the open triangle pointing up is the um, symbol for inheritance, which is is a relationship, and then class composition is has a. And then we demoed the linked list, and uh, we took a look here in Figure 6.4 at uh, the structure of a node and of a list and I think where were we at the end of class last time oh I, uh, I think we had done figure 6.6 .6. we had looked at the we did a code walkthrough of two stream yeah so what we're going to do for the rest of the hour now is we're going to do we're going to look at some of the other methods and we'll do some code walkthroughs to give you some uh, patterns uh, programming patterns for how to complete the exercises. Figure 6.6. .6. Here's one of the easiest ones to do. This is the method is empty. So the way you would use this would be like if you had a list called my list, you, you could say if my list dot is empty. Blah blah blah. Okay, so does everybody see what is empty does? Uh, so we use this naming convention that uh, booleans start with is. That's a very common programming convention. You should adopt that for your own personal computing habits. Okay, it's uh, because is empty is either true. It either is empty or it's not. So it returns a boolean. So it's a very common naming convention. And look, is all we? Uh, what's the code walkthrough? <laughs> One line. What does it say? Return what? Head equals equals no. null pointer. Now look, the, the amateur way to do this would be what? If head equals equals null pointer, return true. true, else, return false. Now if you find yourself doing that, you know, try to not, try to get, eliminate that habit. Are you with me? Well, there's another thing, you guys. When I'm handing back these homeworks, I'm making comments about the quality of your code. So it's, um, one of the things we want to do is we want to get professional habits here. We don't want to be amateurs anymore. So it's, I mean, even though your program works, you know, that's really not good enough. It should be quality code. It should look good. It should be concise. You shouldn't use unnecessary variables when you don't need them. Are you with me? So, uh, so let's strive 
for, for, for uh, producing uh, good, clean code. And I'll have to say that this code that I'm showing you used, I mean, it has evolved over many years and we've had class discussions about, hey, couldn't you do this this way? And I think, oh yeah, you're right. And I've kind of, I've tried to clean this code up over the years. So I think it's a pretty good model for, for quality code. Okay, so that uh, is empty. Now here, so let's now do some, uh, look at some methods for construction and insertion. <coughs> so now, we, I mentioned this in the demo, but um, when we did uh, the concatenate, I think I, I mentioned that we did it was a cut concatenate instead of a copy concatenate, and we'll look at that in a minute. But, um, but here is a really important idea in figure 6.7 that applies to all kinds of linked data structures, okay? And it's the idea of a shallow copy versus a deep copy, okay? Now let's take a look at this figure and make sure we understand the difference. Mm -hmm. Suppose in part A we have two lists. Your list, which points to a linked list that has 9, 2, 4, 7, and then null pointer. And then my list, which is empty. And let's suppose you say, you say my list gets your list, and the gets is a shallow copy. What a shallow copy does is it makes my list point to the first node of your list. Are you with me? So, and so basically what's happening there is the lists are being shared. Okay? On the other hand, if you say my list gets your list and the assignment is a deep copy, then it makes a literal copy of your, my list gets a literal copy of your list. Are you with me? Now here's what we're going to do. So that is a super important concept. And what we are going to do, and and typically the assignment operator, when we overload the assignment operator, what do you suppose we're going to do? Do you suppose we're going to do part, a, uh, part B or part C? Is it going to be a shallow copy or a deep copy? Deep. It's going to be a deep copy. Okay. So uh, I think one of your, uh, now I, don't, I didn't review what your exercise assignment was, but I think you have to do, I think you have to do the copy thing. Yeah, okay. So, it'll, so we'll take a look at, some, at, at uh, some hints on how to do that. All right, so um, here in figure 6.8 now are some more uh, um, specifications of these uh, methods that construct lists. So prepend, the post condition is that um, the, uh, you give it a value uh, and the data is prepended to this list and then append puts it at the end. Operator gets, that overloads the assignment operator. And, and notice what the post condition is for operator gets. This list is a what? Deep copy, see? So that's a deep copy. So, uh, yeah, so, so, what, so basically what we're, what we're going to see then is that operator gets, the overloaded operator, is going to actually call copy head. And copy head is, is going to do the copy. So l let's take a look at what copy head does. It's, it has, what does, first of all, is it void? Is copy head void, yes or no? It, correct, it is not. What does it return? A pointer to a node. Does everybody see that? Because it returns an L node T star. Are you with me? So an L node T star, that means it returns a pointer to a node. And so the post condition is a deep copy of the head of the right hand side is returned. Now what is the right hand side? Is the right hand side a node or a list? In copy head. Is the right-hand side a node or a list? It's a list. It's a list L, T, list L, right? So, so um, copy is actually going to do the work of operator gets. Let's review what new does. If um, you have a primitive type like an int and you say, I gets new int, what does new do? It does two things. Remember what it does? Creates new memory and returns the pointer to the memory. On the other hand, if it's an object, if you say new uh, something that's an object, there's a third thing that happens. Do you remember what that other thing is? It calls to the structor. It, yes. So what it does is it allocates storage from the heap, then it does what? Executes the constructor, then it does what? Returns the pointer. 
Okay, so here what we're going to see is the action of a constructor. Well, we are now using shared pointers instead of raw pointers, and so some of these constructors have been changed, and in fact, we don't even need a constructor, explicit constructor anymore for the uh, list L, is all we need is the constructor for an L node. So here's how the constructor for an L node works. Here in figure 6.9, we see the colon after the signature of L node. And this colon is not an inheritance colon. Do you remember what that is? Although all those of you out in video land, you are right. It is, in fact, a initializer list. And do you remember how the initializer list works? This underscore data, paren data, close paren, outside the brace of the body is equivalent to what? You are right. It is equivalent to underscore data gets data. Okay, so let's continue on with the demo of how the constructor actually works. Here in figure 6.9, we see the actions that are performed when we do p gets new l node t 9 for raw pointer p. So part A of the figure shows, the, it shows that initially p is not pointing to anything. And recall that when new executes on an object, it does three things. It returns, it allocates storage from the heap, it calls the constructor, and then it returns the pointer. When we call new, here part B of the figure shows allocation of the storage from the heap. And because we are saying new L node, it allocates enough storage for an L node. And then in the next part of the figure, it executes the constructor. But what did we say the constructor did? The constructor is equivalent to underscore data gets data. And we are passing 9 as the actual parameter to the constructor, which corresponds to the formal parameter data. And then underscore data gets data. And underscore data is the attribute of the node, the first part of that node. And so that's why the 9 appears there. And then the third thing that happened was it returns that pointer. But what happens when it returns the pointer? P gets that pointer. So in the next part of the figure, P points to the same thing that that return pointer uh, was pointing to. So we return the pointer and assign to P. So that's the action of the uh, constructor for a node. Now in this particular case, we did this sequence assuming that P is a raw pointer. If you want P to be a shared pointer, which is normally the case, then what you have to do is put this code, new L node T9, you have to put that in the constructor for the shared pointer. And so it looks like this. So to make P a shared pointer, you would execute auto P gets shared pointer to an L node, and then in the constructor for that, in the parameter for the constructor, in between the parentheses, we put the new L node T9. So this is a little the, the little recipe of how you allocate a new node from a heap with a smart pointer. And here again, this I know this C++ code is very complicated. It's complex looking, and it is complex. And so on an exam, I would not expect you to memorize exactly how to do every, every single syntactic detail of this. So I will give you code like this, or maybe even this exact same code, so that you can use it as a model for, how t for when you want to um, perform an operation on a linked structure, you can refer to this on an exam to see exactly how to do it. All right, now let's take a look at prepend. So here's a little code walkthrough for prepend. So um, remember, we demoed prepend. And uh, what it, so what do we give prepend? It takes a what? A, what, is, what is the parameter of prepend? It takes a, 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 a constant reference data. So it takes a data. So it takes a data value. So, all right. And let's take a look at what it does. It does L node T star temp gets underscore head. Head gets new L node T 
data. Oh, but, ooh, what's happening there? New LNOT data. That's calling the what? The, the constructor for the node, right? Just and then and then head underscore head gets arrow next gets temp. So what? Ha how does that work? So look. So suppose we say suppose my list is the list that has two and four, and so its underscore head points to the two, which the next points to the four, and dot dot dot. This goes on for not forever, but could go on for a hundred times, right? Are you with me? And suppose we say, and so that, suppose that's the original list, and we say my list dot prepend nine. So let's take it. So what is the code? What happens? What's the first thing that happens? L node star temp. So now it allocates a, 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 a little a temporary pointer to a node, and it points it to what? The head. The same thing as head. Yeah, the same thing the head's pointing to. So does everybody see then that this is what it does? It's that little local variable temp, which is a pointer, and it points to head. Are you with me? Okay. And then what happens? Head gets what? New L no T data, but data is what? Nine. Because the actual parameter is nine, right? Formal parameter is data, actual parameter nine. Are you with me? So what, is, what does that do? Boom. So now do you see underscore head is no longer pointing to the first node? Well, it's a good thing we had a temporary pointing there because we couldn't access it otherwise. It would be lost. Are you with me? And now what happens? Underscore head arrow what? Next. Well, what, which one is that? That's this one. And what does it get? Temp. So what does that make it do? This is pointer assignment. So it makes it do what? Point to the same thing temp points to. So. Boom. And now it's all hooked up. And then when you exit the prepend, temp goes away because it's a local variable on the runtime stack. Does everybody, so does everybody see how this works? Is everybody clear? Okay. Okay, now append is an exercise. So let's think about what you're going to have to do to, to do, let's think about what you're going to have to do in order to do append. So look. First thing you're going to have to do is let's suppose we have the, the original list in part A has the list 9, 2, 4, and we want to append something to the end. Well, first you're going to have to initialize a, a P because you've got to get to the end of the list, right? So you're going to run P down the list. So you initialize P and then you advance P in a while loop or a for loop, okay? And you keep advancing it until it gets what? Until it gets to the last one, but now you, you can't you can't let it get nil. It's got to point to something at the end, right? And then what will you do? After you do that loop, then what will you do? You will have to allocate the new node with new and attach it. All right. Does everybody see? So you have to work through all this. Okay. So that's the append exercise. And copy head is also an exercise. Now, copy head, I've given you some guidance here on how to do copy head. Let's take a look. I, I've grouped this here with operator gets. See what operator gets does? Let's do a little code walkthrough of operator gets first. So it says operator gets, and it has the parameter is the right hand side. Now, this, you guys, is really important C stuff. This is the canonical way to override, to overload the assignment operator. And this is super crucial. We say if this is not equal to the right hand side. Now, what is, have we talked about what this is? You guys know what this is? It's a pointer to the current object. This is a pointer to the current object. All right? And so it's a pointer. And the right hand side is a list, so ampersand right hand side is what? The address of that list. Now, here's the problem. Even though a programmer would probably never do this, what if the programmer writes my list? gets my list. 
this should be this is legal and what should it do it should not change my list do you see what I mean it should not change. but unfortunately the way this works the way this works is it makes a deep copy of this, it deletes it, and it sets my list equal to that deep copy. And if it does, and if it does that, and if it deletes my list, it's going to delete what it's, you see, it's, it's not, it's, it, it will not work. You can trace through the code there and see why it would not work, but, 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 but what happens is if somebody says my list gets my list, nothing should happen. You see, it should just return. It should just return the same my list for the gets. You know, for gets. Okay. But now, if if the right hand side is not the same list as my list, then what's the very first thing it does? It does. It clears my list. Do you see? It clears the left hand side. Are you with me? It clears the left hand side and then it makes a copy of this one and assigns it to this. So you see why it wouldn't work if you said my list gets my list because it would clear my list but then this one would be cleared, <laughs> would be you know recycled into the heap. So it wouldn't work. So this is the way you always do, this is the way you always overload the assignment operator. So now here's what your job is. Your job is, is to execute copy head. Now what did we say copy head returned? What did it copy head return with? A pointer to a note. So you see that it does underscore head gets copy head. So underscore head is a what? Pointer to a node. Are you with me? So now, here's what we do. First of all, if right hand side dot is empty. Oh, we already wrote is empty. So if the right hand side is empty, we just return the null pointer. Right? Because that's what an empty list is in our, in our setup. In, the, in our setup. The empty list is just, here, look, we had a picture of that. Back here in figure 6.2a, that's the empty list. Are you with me? That's what the empty list is. So, so, if, so if the right hand side is empty, we just return the null pointer. So this gets, clear, this gets cleared out and, it, and that's the, it's the empty list if, if this one was empty. Okay, if the, if the right hand side was empty. Okay, and now else what happens? The right hand side is not empty. So because it's not empty, we know it has what? At least what? One node. One node. Now does everybody see that, that we guarded that situation? So now we know that whenever we say, I mean we know that that underscore, that right hand side dot underscore head has, a, is pointing to a node. And so we have these three. Uh, we have these three local variables: star p, star q, and star result. And I'm giving you some guidance here. It takes three lines to set up the loop invariant, followed by a single while with only three lines in the body. No additional local variables. So don't go inventing more new variables. Okay. Here's here's. I'm giving you the format of it. So here is a little picture of what happens in Figure 6.13. In part A, now this is part way through the loop. Are you with me? This is part way through the loop, and and then and then what we're going to do is we're going to get we're going to go one step through the loop. All right. Now part way through the loop, what happens is the in, the loop invariant is p points to the node in the right hand side. You see we have right hand side up there on the top. So p points to the right hand to a node in the right hand side. P points to the node in the right-hand side, preceding the node to be duplicated next. See, in result, in result, we are going to. What are we going to do in this step of the loop? We're going to. We are going to going to duplicate the what? The four. You see what we're saying? We're going to duplicate the four, right? So P points to the node in the right-hand side, preceding the node to be duplicated next. So P pointing to the node preceding 4, which is going to be duplicated next. And furthermore, Q points to the last node in result. All right, result is what we're going to return. Are you with me? So now, what do we have to do? So now how do we go, how do we, how do we, how do we, as we go through the loop, what has to happen when we go through, go through the loop? Well, what has to happen is, what we do is, we attach a copy of the node 
Okay, so it's going to take what kind of an operator? It's going to take doing a what? A new, no, no, no. New. It's going to be take, uh, it's going to take a new to get a copy of that node. Are you with me? So it's going to involve a new, all right? So attach a copy of the node following P. So you take, a, you, you'll, you'll copy that one, and then and, and you attach it to the one that Q points to. Are you with me? And then what you do is you advance P, and how do you advance P? P, gets P, P arrow next, and then do what? Advance Q. Q gets Q arrow next, and now the loop invariant has been set up has been reestablished, and it's time to go through the loop again. Do you see? So look, it's, it's a P going down, P is going down the right hand side, and Q, and Q is going down the result and, and, and doing it. See? So boom, 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 and then when you get to the end, figure out how to terminate your loop, and then return, and then return what? Result. result. Question? Oh, before the loop, to make it, you initialize, the question is, how do you know where to initialize P? You, initi you initialize, let's go back here to, the, to, the, to this setup. So, P, Q, and result are all local variables, and they are pointers. And you have to initialize them at the beginning, you have to establish the loop invariant at the beginning. So, what, and what is the loop invariant? The loop invariant is that make P point to the node in the right hand side preceding the node to be duplicated next. That's what I would And make Q point to the last node in result. Right, but how do you know, like how does P know which is supposed to be duplicated next? Well, you start at the front, you, you start at the beginning. You start at the beginning. Are you with me? You start at the beginning and then work. Yeah. So is the loop invariant that P points to the node in the right side? In side, preceding the node to be duplicated, and Q points to the last node in result. Okay. Yeah. Where does, like, how do you know what the result is? Result is a local variable, result is a local variable, and you set it up, you set it up to point to the first, as you go through the loop, you, result stays the same. Result, you see, result stay here, let, in part A, result never changed. So you set it up in the beginning. You set up, you set up, you initialize your loops in the beginning so that result is pointing to the right thing. And as you go through the loop, the result never changes. Now this is, you see, this is, this is, this is going to require some thinking. And trust me, you guys, if you, if, do any of you guys program this is a, a program debugging by trial and error. You try something, if it doesn't work, you just try something else, you just, if it doesn't work, try something. Trust me, if you try to program this by trial and error, yeah, you'll never get it. There's too, many, there's too many ways to go wrong. You gotta think through, you gotta think through uh, how to do it. Okay, so Piazza will be good, I think. Okay, so methods for destruction and removal. So here's some methods for destruction and removal. Okay, so, um, we have clear, post condition, this list is cleared to the empty list. Rem first, precondition, the list is not empty. Post condition, the first element is removed from this list and re returned. A rem last, I think, did, I think we demoed these, right? So the, the last element is removed from this list and returned. And then uh, remove, you, you, you test it for a value. Okay, you give it a value and you, and you remove it. So, so, um, so let's take, let's, let's take a look at, uh, now here I've done clear for you. Okay, so let's see how clear works. Okay, well now that we have smart pointers, our clear method is really easy to program. So here's the clear, it's only one executable statement, namely underscore head dot reset, which has the effect of simply setting underscore head to the null pointer. This is how you do it with smart pointers. So here in part A of the figure, shows the initial list where underscore head points to the node that contains 9 which in turn points to 2 and etc. And whenever we execute head.reset what happens is as shown in part B of the figure underscore head is set to the null pointer. 
And now the magic of, autom of automatic garbage collection comes into play because the system detects that there are no more pointers pointing to the node that contains 9 in the data part. And therefore, automatic garbage collection will deallocate the node with 9 in it. But at that point, the system detects that there are no more pointers pointing to the node that has 2 in it. And it will therefore deallocate 2 automatically, sending it back to the heap to be recycled. And so on and so on. And the result then is automatically what happens is the situation in Part C, where the garbage has been collected for us. Now I can't tell you how great this is compared to how we used to have to do it. Because without this automatic garbage collection, you would have the programmer would be required to go through in a loop and deallocate all that stuff manually. So this is a big advance. So REM last is an exercise. Now REM last, this is an interesting exercise, an interesting exercise because it uses what I call the inchworm effect. You know how an inchworm goes? It goes, you know, like. Whoosh, whoosh. You know how they crawl the inchworm, you know, inchworm. Well, so look, at the P, P and the Q are like the inchworm. So what, what happens is Q goes up and then P goes up, and then Q goes and then P goes and then Q goes and then P. Have you, have you, have you used this technique before? Okay, yes. good. So anyway. So here, suppose we have the original list. We initialize Q to nil, P, P to what? Underscore head, right? You see? And then what happens is Q gets P and then ad P advances. Are you with me? And then Q gets P, and then what happens? P advances. Are you with me? And then Q gets P, and then P advances. And now we are where we need to be to do REM last. Do you see? Now we are where we need to be to do REM last, because we have access to, to what two nodes? The last node, but we also have to have access to the what? Penultimate node. Which means what? <laughs> Next to last. <laughs> okay, we also have, not only do we have access to the last node, we have access to the penultimate node because, because we're going to have to change what? We're going to have to change this, the next of the penultimate node. See? So then, what, then, you, do your, then you do what you need to do by removing the, to remove the last node. Now you, see, you can see how to do that. But see, you need access to the, to the penultimate node. Yeah? No, no, actually, that's a good question. No, when you say delete P, P will still be pointing to that node. So it's but the thing, it's not the null pointer right now. no, it, P arrow next is the null pointer, is null pointer. But wh when you say delete P, that doesn't change the value of P. What that does is that goes into the that that calls the the heap manager to recycle that data, but P can still be pointing that, that as a recycled, you know, but it's garbage value. You would never use it. And not only that, but P is going to go away because, look, P is a local variable. So it'll go away when, when, the, uh, when REMLAST uh, returns. Does everybody see that? So now here are some methods for manipulation. Okay. Here's set first. So set first does just one simple thing. I mean, we give it 99 and we say my list dot or dot set first 99 and it sets the first. So what does it do? We have this uh, precondition, you know, it's got a, it can't be empty. You can't set the first of an empty list because an empty list doesn't have a first. So but otherwise, what do we do? Head arrow underscore data gets data. Right? That's pretty straightforward. And here is concat. I think this is one of your exercises. Is this one of your exercises? Have you looked this up? I don't remember if you... I don't remember. Concat, no. Oh, concat is not one of your exercises? Oh, too bad. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I don't remember. But anyway. Um, yeah, don't double check. You might want to double check. I thought I... I, I thought I... It's not? Okay. Okay, well anyway, here's how, here's how you, you would do concat. Um, it's an exercise in the book. So basically what you have to do is you have to work your way. It's a cut concatenate. So you have to work your way down. You have to work your way down to the end of my list 
and then hook that up to the first part of your list. See? And then your list, you set, under, your list dot underscore head gets set to null, to the null pointer, to nil. All right? And then, and it can, I think we demoed concat. Yeah. And it was a cut, you see how this is a cut concatenate. It doesn't make a duplicate and concatenate it and leave the original alone. See? So that's, that's a concatenate. And here, did I ask you to do reverse? Mm -hmm. This is a classic in place reverse. This is a classic, this is the kind of thing that it's just like a, it's just a very, very well known technique. To how to reverse a list in place, re reverse the order of a list in place. So what happens is, here's the invariant again. We have P rest points to the first node in the list in a list of the last M values of the original list, and P reverse points to the first node of a list of the first n minus m values of the original list in reverse order. Well, that's a whole that's a big mouthful. All right, but here here let's in part a what we have is the original list nine two four seven three, and what happens is we have our two auxiliary pointers are p re, p rest and p reverse. Now look, you see that part way through the loop, what is p rest pointing to? The fourth seven and the three. So that's pointing to the first node where of the last ones of the original. Do you see what we're saying? Yes. It's the first node of the last ones of the original. And P reverse points to the what? Points to the first node of a list in reverse order. See? So the list in reverse, see, what, what is the P reverse pointing to? The list 2, 9. Do you see? It's pointing to 2, 9. So, well, that's the 9, 2 in reverse order. So now what happens, so, so what do you do, what happens each time you go through the, each time you go through the loop, what do you do? Well, you know, you change, you, you, you change that to look like, you change part B to look like part C. That's one time going through the loop. You see? No, that's one time. Yes, one time, yeah, part C is one time through the loop after part B. So what has happened is, P rest, you, 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 you make, so now P reverse, you change, you change P reverse, boom, and then this to here, and so now this is four, two, nine, and the rest of this is the seven and three, and you go through one more time, and what is it? You see? Well, one more time, and two more, I guess this is the final, this is two more times for this one. You see? So if you set up your, if you set up your, um, P, your P rest and your P reverse the right way, you can do this in order, I mean in place rather, just by changing links. No copy. Now zip and unzip, Zip and unzip, I know I did not assign, but they are very, they are very clever, um, complicated, semi-complicated ones. I challenge you to do zip and unzip. I, if you think, you think you're a good programmer, do zip and unzip. <laughs> but anyway, I want to do one more thing. I know I, I want to keep you five minutes over if that's all right. Um, because there's one more really important design pattern that we have to do. This one is something that we're going to use. Now this is one of the classic design, what are the three? <laughs> Data structures, object-oriented design patterns, and C++. This is a classic object-oriented design pattern that is present in all libraries. That I, know. I don't think there's no, no, there's no library that doesn't use the iterator pattern. Here's the problem. Okay, because we were rushed for time at the end of the lecture, I'm going to complete this video recording with a screencast made after the lecture was concluded that describes in more detail the iterator design pattern. The whole idea behind the iterator design pattern is that the user of the list might need to have some custom processing that requires a access to all of the items of the data structure, in this case of the linked list. And because we cannot anticipate all the custom processing requests, uh, the, the library designers cannot anticipate all the custom processing requests, what the library does is it gives the user the ability to iterate through all the elements of the list, but shielding the user from the internal details of nodes and pointers and deletes and all that kind of stuff. So the 
So what an iterator does is it provides the user with the ability to access all the values of the list without knowing the details of how the list is constructed. Now the way it works is shown in figure 6.23. So we note here that we have our normal list L, which is template, and it has an underscore head, which is a pointer to a node. And then um, th this uh, solid diamond that points to L node means that the list L has a L node, and then the solid diamond from the L node and then pointing to itself is represents the fact that the an L node itself has a pointer to a node. So now what we do with the iterator pattern is we augment this arrangement with a new class called a list L iterator. And this list L iterator is also uh, templatized with a C++ template T. And it has two private attributes. It has an attribute called list L, which is a pointer to a list. And it also has an attribute called underscore current, which is a pointer to a node. And now it also provides for the user this set of one, two, three, four, five, six methods. A method called set iter list L, a method called first, a method called next, a method called has next, a method called is done, and a method called current item. And the user of the iterator accesses the elements of the list through these methods. So the user of the list iterator is shielded from the fact that there is an underscore head, which is a pointer to a node, and all the detail, the internal details of a node. Now, we have connecting this list iterator class diagram with the list is this not a solid diamond, but an open diamond that is pointing to list L. And what this says, it's like class composition, but instead of being class composition where the list L iterator has a list, it has a pointer to a list that list L that another object that another object or another class is the owner of. In this uh, figure 6.23, we see that a list L iterator has a list L, and that open diamond you see is the tail of an arrow that points to list L, and the list L iterator also has a, a pointer to a node called current, and that is the open diamond, the tail, the open diamond at the tail of the arrow that points to L node. So there is a there are similarities and differences to a solid diamond, which is class composition, and this open diamond. And here's what the difference is. The symbol with the open diamond is called the aggregation relation. So the symbol is the open diamond, and the relation is has a link to but is not the owner of. So let's go back here to the to figure 6.23. We see that this underscore list L, this private attribute of list L iterator, it has a list but it's not the owner of the list that it has. It's pointing to a list that is owned by list L. And similarly, even though it has a pointer to a node and the pointer to the node is called current, even though it has a pointer to a node, it's pointing to L node, and and the underscore current is not the owner of L node. So what does it mean for a a what does it mean for a class to to be an owner? The owner of an entity is responsible for the allocation and deallocation of that entity, and so the with the aggregation relation. What happens is, so going back to the figure 6.23, what we're stating here is that the list L iterator 
even though it has pointers to a list, and even though it has a pointer to a list, and even though it has a pointer to a node, it doesn't own those. So it does. It never will do new or delete for those. That is not the list L iterator's responsibility. It just has. It just uses a list and uses a node that has already been allocated by uh, a different object. So let's see how this all pans out. In figure 6.24, we see that the code for that UML diagram, for the list L iterator diagram. So we see that list L, there are two private attributes in the list L iterator class. There's the list L T star, so that, so underscore list L is a pointer to a list, and we have a L node star underscore current, so that says that underscore current is a pointer to a node. Now these are private, so the user of the iterator never sees these. The user of the iterator only manipulates these through the methods of the iterator. So here are the methods of the iterator. Now the code for the methods for the iterator is so short that in this particular, for this particular class, Instead of separating it into a like a .h file and a .c .cpp file or .hpp file and a .cpp file, we are just going to go ahead and and define the, the these are all one-liners. We're just going to define them all at the, at the same place where we declare them. And so we see what does this set iterator list L do? Is all it does is it's given a list L as a parameter, and it sets its internal underscore list L to that list L. So it makes it point to the same list that the user of the iterator gives it. Then the method first is uh, void, and so when we execute first we don't expect it to return anything, and what it does is it sets underscore current to be, to point to the same thing that our underscore list L arrow head points to. So you see internally what that is doing is it's it's causing our list, our internal list, to be initialized. In other words, to point to the head of the list that it has been given. And then our the the next um, method of the list L iterator class is next. And so the user, when the user executes next for its iterator, what it does is it does invisible now to the user. It does underscore current, gets underscore current arrow next. So that goes down to the next element uh, in the linked list. And then if the user needs to check if, if um, whether there is a next element, there is a method called has next, which is a Boolean, which is either true or false. And what, it, and what this method does is it returns current arrow next is not equal to null pointer because if current arrow next equals null pointer equals equals null pointer there would not be a next element in the list alright and then continuing on the next part of the figure um, the there is a method called is done which is a boolean and what it does is it returns underscore current equals equals null pointer because if you're done, if you're at the end of the list, then current will be the null pointer. Of course, of course, that code, the implementation of is done, is invisible to the user of the iterator uh, class. And then there is another, uh, the last method that is available to the user of the of the iterator class is called current item. And this is how the user of the iterator pattern actually accesses the data part of the node in the linked list. And what this uh, method does is there is a precondition um, that it uh, implements there. And then what it returns is current arrow underscore data. Because, you know, internally to this iterator class, underscore current is a pointer to a node. So a node has a data part, has a data part and a next part. So it returns current arrow data. So now to illustrate how this iterator class works, let's compare it with uh, figure 6.6. .6. Now in figure 6.6, .6, this was our two stream uh, method 
with you, without using the iterator. So we're going to have two different versions of it. This two stream is what we did before, and then we will we are going to re-implement this with the with an iterator. Now take a look at this two stream. Remember how we did this? First of all, we stream the left paren to the output stream, and then we say for l node t star p gets underscore head, so that initializes p to point to the the first uh, node in the list, and then we test p not equal to null pointer, and then we do p gets p arrow next, and then we say if p arrow next is not equal to the null pointer, we stream. Now remember, if p arrow next is not equal to the null pointer, that means that there is going to be another node in the list, so we have to separate this node with that other node with a comma. So in that case, we stream p arrow data, and then after that we stream a comma. But if p arrow next is not equal to null pointer, then what do we do? We just stream p arrow data to OS. And then in the end, we do we stream the closing paren to OS. So this is code that we've seen before, and this is the way to do it without an iterator. But now look, here in figure 6.25 is the is the same stream. Now I've I've named this differently. This is named two stream four. Okay, so this is a different version and you can test this to stream 4 in the uh, unit test that comes with the DP4 dis distribution. So there, were, there are several different versions. There's a few different versions of some of the methods, and these different versions are versions that you are to implement using, the, using an iterator. So this is 2Stream4 is the version of 2Stream that uses the iterator. Now look at the code for this 2Stream4. 2Stream4 is, is nice because Look, there is no, there are no nodes, there are no null pointers, nothing like that. This code is all implemented through the services of this iterator class. And so here's what the user does. In order to use an iterator, the user of the iterator has to, has to declare a local iterator. So we say list l iterator, templatize with t, iter. So lowercase i-t-e-r, that's the iterator that this user of the iterator class is using. And so now what we want to do, what the, what the iterator needs to do then, is it's, it needs to associate this iterator with a list, and it uses the set iter list l. So it does iter dot set iter list l this. Now what is this? This is a pointer to this current list. All right. So we are using the current, so, so our, we are linking our iterator to this current list. And then the user says, streams the left paren to OS. And now look, now what we do is we say for iter dot first. And notice that there's nothing about a pointer to a node here. It's just for iter dot first. And then the test is what? And the for loop is what? Not iter dot is done. Okay, so look, there's nothing about nodes or null pointers or anything like that. And then there is, and then what is the, what is the uh, last, what is the uh, thing that happens um, at the end of each, each loop? Iter dot next. All right, and then in the body of the for statement, we say if iter dot has next. So note, we don't have to say, well, if the pointer, no nodes, no nothing. If iter dot has next, oh, then we stream OS. Now here's how we get the current item. We stream OS iter dot current item followed by a comma. Else, we stream just iter dot current item without the comma. And then we stream OS. We stream the, the closing right parent to OS. So the point of using this all this code is that we don't have to we don't have to know anything about um, we don't have to know anything about the internal representation of the list. For example, this code, you if you had an iterator, it wouldn't matter if the internal list were a singly linked list or a doubly linked list or a circular linked list. All these would all those those items would be invisible to the user of the iterator. <clears throat> when you use an iterator code, you don't need to know the internal details of the list that you are getting your information from. And the reason we're doing this, this design pattern with an iterator, is because we will have a another data structure uh, near the end of the course. In fact, it'll be the last one. It'll be a graph. And uh, what we're going to need is we are going to need to 
to, to use a linked list in that data structure, and we're going to have to be able to go down the elements of the linked list and access them in order to, in order to, to do our processing. So that's the purpose of setting up this iter. And here again, it is a very common uh, data uh, object-oriented design pattern that's provided in, in uh, all libraries, all uh, serious libraries. Okay, so that concludes our screencast. You want me? To, I'll pause. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> oh, you need, you need to use uh, Micah's shuttle app. I have it. Ah, it's cool. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's pretty good. Okay. It's too bad. Should we do product placement and keep yes. that in the video? Yes. <laughs>